Yo, this is crazy. Check this. This is a mid-year list video. The last mid-year list video I did, I was sat in the exact same spot I'm in right now, but just at a different angle. It's the exact same spot. That's kind of funny. Hello and welcome to my new video, the top 15 albums of 2022 so far. Hope you guys are doing really well. What a fucking year I've had, man. Jeez, dude. Music, what would we do without music, dog? I'm grateful for these albums, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so I've got 15 right here. I've, no, I feel like I have been a little bit behind on some like big albums. You know, I know Perfume Genius just released his new album. Angel Olsen just dropped her new album. Those are two of like my favorite artists. Like I, I haven't even heard them yet, but not properly. Like not like in full. Yeah, I feel like I'm slacking a little bit, you know. Didn't post Malone drop. <laughs> Fivio Foreign put out his debut album. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like some big things have come out lately that I just haven't got around to. Of all the stuff I have listened to, I have got some favorites. 28th of June right now, we're just about to end June, so yeah, pretty much the halfway point of the year, so it seems like as good a time as any to, to make this. But let me, let me, uh, let me get started. Let's talk about some music. And of course, tell me which albums this year you like the most. Always love talking to, to you guys in the comments about these things. So please let me know what, what albums you have been loving this year. We're all gonna have a different list. We're all gonna have different choices. I wanna see which ones you guys choose. And maybe you might give me some ideas of what to catch up on, you know? So um, yeah, we, we all win. All right, let's kick things off, shall we? With some honorable mentions. I've got uh, just four honorable mentions. These are the four that, as much as I love them, didn't quite make it. First off. Yes. Jack White, Fear of the Dawn, the best album Jack White has been a part of since fucking Icky Thump. Shit, maybe. This album, I feel like, just hits all the spots I want a Jack White album to hit, man. Like, he's channeled that weirdness from the last solo album into much more re rewarding, fulfilling, powerful tunes. Like, the timbres on here, the snare on Into the Twilight, those scuzzy guitars on that title track. It feels like your throat's getting slashed with every note played. I mean that in a great way. It's a very overwhelming record. It organized chaos in the purest form. Don't like Heidi Ho that much, admittedly, but that's like the only song. Seeing him live tonight, you know. Thank you, mum, for buying me that ticket. You absolute legend, early birthday gift. Thank you. It's very, it's very kind of you. How could I possibly repay you? Very fair maiden for such activities. Very even handed me. <laughs> Next up. All right, we got. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Don't forget the Lizard, the Lizard Wizard. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard with their new record, Omnium Gatherum. Uh, you know, I'm not the biggest King Gizzard fan. They drop so many fucking albums, it's absurd. I, I wish I was a King Gizzard fan. I wish I was like a diehard because I'd be living in heaven all, all the time because I got all this amazing music that I love to listen to, but unfortunately, I don't love all their music like that. But they're a band, they always try new things with every album, they always try something new with their sound. So you never know, any one of these records could end up being the one that gets you. And this was the one that got me. There's something so grandiose about this album. It's, it's so progressive, so, so metal influenced, occasionally kind of relaxing. It's got elements of like jazz, loungy rock, and then elements of like thrash and then prog rock. It's like, this is such a fucking sprawling, opus it feels like a culmination of all of the styles that they've kind of tapped into but just on one giant behemoth of a record i feel like there's so many ideas happening it's just it's just such a nice pool of sorry i just hit the camera nice pool of just creativity and i think for that reason it just ended up feeling like such a just a magnificent experience to listen to and there are some serious highlights kepler 22b that's the place for me Bruh, that's a nice tune. The opening track, the 17 minute, woohoo! That shit crazy, dude. Jeez Louise. Yeah, it might be my favorite album by them, you know. Next up. <laughs> Gorilla Toss. Famously Alive. Great album by Gorilla Toss. I've never been too hot on Gorilla Toss with their psychedelic kind of a very hyper sort of sound they got, you know. Sometimes it's, it's dope, but I guess when it comes to the albums, they've yet to make an album until now that really like got its claws in me. Like, I need to come back to this. Like these songs are really, they're just infectious through my head. The the sounds are just amazing. Like that never really like amazed me like that. I can appreciate the creativity, but with this album, they got me good, man. Like there are some seriously beautiful textures going on with some of these tracks. It's just a giant wash of just bliss at points and other points it's just like a a rampage like that opening track seriously smacked me in the face when i first heard it it wasn't what i was expecting and it just kept up that momentum final honorable mention meditate one street separate height 
Lupe Fiasco with uh, Drill Music and Zion. This just dropped. I'm still digesting it. Lupe Fiasco, one of the best rappers of all fucking time, if not the best. He's like overwhelmingly good at rapping and writing. This album is the most straightforward shit he's dropped in a minute. It feels like his discography is just one giant concept album and then one, you know, <laughs> radio friendly, like shooting for trends, chasing trends type album. <laughs> like it's just like either that or that. This is not really either of those. It's just 10 tracks of Lupe being a great rapper. <laughs> it's the most like no gimmicks one. And um, that really makes it stick out in his catalog. The second half particularly is just unbelievably good from Miss Mural onwards. Whole album is insane. I'm not crazy about the pace of it. And uh, maybe that'll warm up to me with more listens. Again, it's early days. Uh, there is a bit of a sluggish pace to the record, but the writing, the hooks, the instrumentals, bruh credit man like these are great tunes and they're just they're just so much imagery to unpack there's so many wonderful turns of phrases i i'm, I'm just loving peeling it away so that gets a mention because it could very well end up on my favorites list later down the line you know but let's move on to the actual list shall we number 15 on my top 15 number 15 on my top fifteen. number 15 on my top 15. when you in the feeling you in the cell. Future! I never liked you. You know, Future, he used to be like one of my least favorite. <laughs> he used to be like one of my top choices for like, yo, some of these mainstream rappers today are trash. Like for example, Future, <laughs> you'll write away. Like, you know, this is back before I was a huge Carty fan, you know, before I saw the light and realized that trap music's incredible. Future's new album's so good, dude. 16 tunes on here. One of my main complaints with Future's music is that it can run on a bit long, not too many ideas are happening. He'll kind of repeat the same sort of, sa sort of sound a little bit, you know, on some of his records, you know, namely his last uh, album, High Off Life. I did think suffered from that. It was a cool album, but yeah, I think it was a bit samey. You know, quite a few of his, of his records, uh, you know, strike me that way. But this one, I think, has so much d diversity across its, its runtime, it just never loses my interest. And I think Future finds some exciting deliveries, exciting flows, some catchy hooks, some really good features that all bring a unique, fun flavor to the mix. He just makes a really compelling and entertaining album, front to back. It's definitely one of the stronger, like, mainstream hip-hop releases I've heard in a minute. So, credits, credit credits to Future. 14, another rap album, but it's, it's more underground, this, this one. Place. Crash course learning at a bit. S. Reedy. An album. What songs? This is definitely one of my peak prime comfort listens this year. Fucking love S. Reedy, man. This is definitely my favorite of his projects. I think his singing has gotten a lot better than what it used to be. Not that it was ever horrible or anything, but uh, he just sounds like so much more sure of himself. And he's got a lot more range too. And there's a, there's a wonderful feature list here as well. Open Mike Eagles on it. That's always a plus. I'm always gonna have like a soft spot in my head for like Midwest emo guitar timbres and shit like that. Or anything that maybe feels like it was even slightly influenced by like early 2000s pop punk, skate punk shit, like Kerrang shit. <laughs> like anything that, where that's like even a slight thought in my brain, I'm gonna have a bit of a, a liking towards it. And I catch that here, which I love. But it also has a sensitivity to it that, f that makes me feel really comfortable makes you want to come back to it. s Reedy is just a delight to listen to. I just, I find him, find his voice refreshing. And um, yeah, I'm gonna be playing this all year. It's, it's a wonderful record. 13. <laughs> Bet you didn't see this one coming. <laughs> I liked it in my roundup. I did give it a positive uh, paragraph <laughs> to give it, you know, I said nice things about it. Yo, I don't know what happened, man, but. <laughs> oh, no, that's not, that's not true. I do know what happened. I went to go see Kenny Beats in, in uh, London and during his set he did y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here and he transitioned that into Rosalia soco papi soco and it went crazy I was like wait <laughs> Rosalia is sounding amazing right now and I was like yo I gotta, I gotta listen to that and I just started listening to that song a shitload it's such a good fucking song and um I was like man let me let me give this album some more time and this album is phenomenal, dude. I think Rosalie is such a wild creative. The amount of style she jams into just a single track is so dizzying. And um, her ear for rhythm, melody, finding such off-kilter patterns in beats that like can dart from feeling simple to feeling insanely busy. Like she makes it feel so comfortable despite it being so, you know, 
dauntingly, overwhelmingly chaotic at points at the same time. Like, I just find it such a frazzling record. I just keep finding new things to appreciate about it the more I hear it. And yeah, it's definitely a highlight this year. It'd be, it'd be disingenuous not to put it on the list. Number 12. Without Harry. You little cutie. You little sexy bitch. <laughs> oh, Harry, I like this man. Harry fucking star. I'm about to star in that movie too. I'm, I'm excited to see that movie he got coming out with Florence Pugh. Directed by Olivia Wilde. Yo, book smart. Watch that if you haven't. That's a great comedy. Olivia Wilde directed that as well. I have respected his solo output from the beginning, you know. I've never been a huge One Direction fan. I'm sure they got bangers though. I feel like, you know, if we, if we all go back and go through the One Direction discography, we'd probably be like, you know what? They had some hits, man. <laughs> they had some bumps. We, we were too harsh on the, the One Direction. But yeah, I always did, like, when they were a thing, kind of dismiss them like, oh yeah, it's just like pop, fodder, whatever, you know, don't care. Uh, but Harry, yeah, like his first album, good but definitely very like dramatic serious i think to its detriment at points it kind of felt like it thought it was more major than it was more like important like it sounded like it thought it was just like some huge fucking moment and sometimes that worked and made for some glorious music but uh at times it could be a bit like draining a bit tiresome fine line you know a bit more carefree a bit more fun poppy approach but a little cheesy you know watermelon sugar no nah, bro it's it's not that hot. It's not that hot, bro. It's a little, uh, trash. <laughs> Some of those tunes are just, they just rub me a little bit the wrong way. A little too sugary for your boy. But this new record hits the sweet spot for me. This is Harry in his bag. This feels like the most honest, raw look at Harry, like who he is, uh, out of all of his albums. And I love that about it. It's something so gentle and intimate about this record. But it's still catchy and still feels like it's meaningful and important to him. It gets the best parts of his first two and brings it to an album that just feels soft, warm, and inviting. And I just think it makes for a really just pleasant, summery, smile-inducing record. I think it's another really good example of a great mainstream pop album. We had a couple of them this year, man. There's another one coming up too later on in the list. We'll talk about that. But yeah, let's get to number 11. 11 goes to... My guy, Huaco S with the album Plunk. I love this man, incredible artist in my opinion. And this was not the direction I thought he was gonna go in with his new album, Plunk. This is like a full on one of tricks point never record. <laughs> he just goes full one of tricks point never. The sound play here is mental. Like the first track when there was like, when the big dings happen, whew, feels like a fucking air, it feels like a lightning air, like, it feels like a spike made of pure light matter just darting into your brain. It's like, how the fuck did you make it sound that fierce? There are so many like moments in this record where from a production perspective, I'm just like spellbound. And I don't think he loses his ability to make such immersive, deeply moving and warm compositions as well, which is what I loved him for originally. Just, I don't even, I've never really found like the right word to describe them. I guess like comforting, but like it's, it's more than that, bro. <laughs> like there's like a massive like sense of just, uh, just beaming bliss that comes from his textures on his earlier stuff, on his 2016 record. There's something just so moving about just the, the world he builds with that record. And I don't think he loses his ability, his ability to do that on here, but he just brings it to a context that's more just uh, more fast paced, more unpredictable. Really appreciate the direction he took here. I think it's a, a wonderful new style for the guy uh, that just proves he's got more tricks up his sleeve than I gave him credit for. So thank you, Huaco S, for a great album. And now we're in the top 10. Would you look at that? Beautiful. Number 10, you ask, what could be the first entry in the top 10, what could it possibly be? Well, let me inform you of what it is. It's FKA Twig. Capri songs. FKA Twig's albums, they are not like this normally. It's a mixtape. Well, it's an album, but like it's a mixtape, I don't know. You get the sense hearing this record that this is just a playground. This is FKA Twig's letting loose, not spilling out her feelings. This is just her appreciating her position the people that made her, where she is, where she came from, having fun, making some bangers. It's an R&B pop record. It's got a futuristic kind of edge to it though, much like all of her other records do. I've seen a lot of people say that this is their favorite FKA Twigs album. I could easily see why, because the first two records she has, they're great, but they're, they're heavy, you know, they're, they're, they're slow, they're powerful. I love them and I, I want to live in them. They're musically just, 
bizarre. And uh, this one, I think, is more digestible, more replayable, and caters to strengths that FK Twigs didn't show us before, that she definitely has. Pop songwriting, I think she's got an amazing ear for it. Honda, bro. <laughs> Poppy bones, bro? Dude, a lot of earworms on him, man. If you're looking for a catchy, just unique, and really varied, uh, uplifting pop record, then you, you are covered with this one right here. Number nine. Hatchy. Giving the world away, uh, it's so fucking beautiful, man. How the fuck? How the fuck is it so beautiful? <laughs> Hatchy has been been building her craft for years to make this fucking immaculate album in my eyes. I think it's gorgeous. I love how this record, it, it gets you with its, with its like warmth, its beautiful, like colorful, shoegazy, dreamy sound, with the catchy hooks, with the lovely vocal embellishments. It all just, just wraps you up in a little warm blanket. But then it like, Right, it pulls that blanket away with some of the with the way some of these tracks build and grow into these giant, like monstrous, huge songs. Like, bruh, there are some tracks here where the way they escalate, it always just leaves me like, ah, oh, how the fuck? <laughs> like the rhythm, especially that one. Like by the end, I'm just like gobsmacked. Like, how the fuck did this song get from where it was to where it is now? Hatchy really, really elevates her style to more than just like pleasant, blissful, dreamy, catchy pop stuff into something just like show-stopping with this album and that, th that that i think is why it's ending up on this list as a favor because it made for some of the most deeply moving and just like powerful listens i've had this year so gotta give it a good spot and it gets it gets number nine on the list number eight though number eight there's no room for me to go Black Country New Road, it sounds, sounds right there, like Black Country New Road. Black Country New Road, the hottest new band out right now, man. Like, these guys have really got the music game uh, a bit fucked up, as they say. Originating from Cambridge, and this is their second record. Their first record just came out last year. They're very quickly following it up. And they're still, apparently they're currently touring or performing new material. So they're, they're not slowing down at all. They're just working, recording, writing, being a band, I guess. <laughs> and they're just doing it a lot at a very fast rate and releasing it quickly too which is lovely to see because they make amazing music the first record they put out was was very uh blunt uh really manic at points and this record comparatively is way more gentle the timbres are so like quiet tingly it's like bordering on being like damn near silence at points and i personally think that's even more effective especially when you think of the lead singer isaac like how his voice kind of has that like frailty to it that kind of um like shivering scaredness. It's freaky to listen to. And it was on the first record when it's surrounded by such chaotic instrumentation, but hearing it in a more like barren and intimate kind of context, just like does something to my soul, man. Like this album seriously just has me like eyes wide open. I can't blink, just like stunned. Like I'm, I'm, I'm being exposed to something, something, uh, something important right now and much like the hatchy record, this album definitely knows how to build a huge crescendo and explode in something into something you know magical and it does that plenty with some of these more lengthy tracks that they have like on the on the, on the closer or on how done or on uh snow globes i think this is an essential rock record if you want to listen to something artful tasteful beautiful if you're looking for music that's that fits those three adjectives this the one number seven Beachy House, Once Twice Melody, the latest record from dream pop duo Beach House. These guys have kind of been like the cornerstone dream pop band for a while. Cemented themselves at this point among the greats of the genre, you know, caught two, caught two twins and like, I can't think of any other fucking... <laughs> I'm about to Google classic dream pop band. <laughs> I'm thinking of like slow dive, but that's like, that's like she gays. Yeah, I guess you could say like, you know, slow dive they kind of they kind of they kind of kind of count right <laughs> yeah like m83 yeah yeah right right yeah you're right google you're right i feel you wild nothing sure jesus and mary chain the sunday right the sundays i feel like beach house are in that conversation 100 no question this album was i think entirely produced and arranged by the band themselves too and i think it's their first record where that is the case and it just feels like they have just they're having so much fun with this album and they don't really run low on ideas across the gigantic runtime 
this record has. I think it's like 80, it's like 80 minutes long, 18 tracks. It's a pretty big beefy one right here, but it, it definitely justifies being that length. Like even on disc three, disc four in the second half, I'm still catching things. I still feel like I'm I'm like just jumping to new freaking Mario levels. <laughs> just like this is just not running out of steam. You know, when Sunset first came on, for example, it felt like I'd woken up again into like a new dream whilst I was already super deep in like the most magical dream I've ever had. And I feel like uh, my, my favorite song, it changes on like every listen, basically. It's, it's a wonderful record. I think it might be my favorite one by them. Aside from that, or um, Depression Cherry. Hard to choose. Depression Cherry or Once Twice Melody. What's your favorite Beach House album? Do you have a favorite Beach House? Let me know what it is. For me, it's either this one or Depression Cherry. Number six. And this time I know for sure. <laughs> the Weeknd, Dawn FM, his best album. His best album. You heard it here first. His best album. Oh yeah. Not mixtape. Not mixtape, because House of Balloons are still the GOAT. No, no, hey, no, I wasn't saying mixtape. Don't worry. House of Balloons is still the GOAT, don't you worry. But best album is 100% Dawn FM. This shit is so fucking fire. It's stupid. The concept is so bewildering and fascinating and genuinely meaningful. It's not just some tacked on bullshit. It genuinely has a lot of depth. When you think about the content, you think about the context of this record coming off of After Hours. After Hours, having him sort of paint this picture of losing himself to fame, succumb to it, kind of indulging in it. And then he's seeing the repercussions of that here. And you've got this ghostly, eerie radio host thing. It's like he's stuck in some sort of purgatory. It really nicely ties, in, ties into the tone and themes of this album. And holy shit, does the production bring it to life. One oh tricks point never. You fucking legend okay this man is straight up i gotta freaking restart the camera hold on hold on one of tricks point up you bitch you bitch i don't know how i never saw the potential in his music before for like 80s influenced pop bangers but it's like so clear as day obvious now that I've heard him do that on this record because he produces so much of this uh, record. He's like the main dude producing it. There's also Calvin Harris's production on it too. Max Martin has production on it too. Swedish House Mafia have production on it too. Credits to them as well. Cannot, you know, sleep on the great producers across the board. Everyone who worked on this record production-wise went fucking crazy. But man, one of the point never, you went fucking psycho mode. Holy shit. And now when I go back and listen to One of Tricks Point Never, like I'm, I'm catching the timbres and the way they arpeggiate. And I'm like, yo, this makes so much sense to be translated into pop bangers shit. Like that makes so much sense. How'd I never hear it? Ugh. Anyway, let me shut up. I'm going crazy. The Weeknd as well is incredible on this album. He switches up his vocal delivery in ways I've never heard him do before. The hooks are unreal. Sacrifice, man. Sacrifice. You can't just make that. They never let up. The whole album is just, I feel like every song is a highlight on here for me. I, there's not a single one I wouldn't call a standout moment and for one reason or another. The flow of it's incredible. Uh, I so, it's just super replayable. You know, it, the pace, it just, it's, just, it's always driving forward, moving forward. I find it just such a thrill to enjoy. It's so enjoyable, man. Like After Hours, I, I, was, I heard that and I was like, holy shit, this is, this is an amazing album. Like, I, I'm so glad that he's made this record that's like this good. It's like, it feels like a culmination of all of the things I've loved about him on this one big budget, like successful, like, I'm like, yo, he's done it. Like, this is, this is the one. And then this drops, I'm like, you fucking bitch. <laughs> that was just like, that. now, now, after hours just feels like the, the prelude. <laughs> like this shit, I love this album so damn much. And you saw the reaction video I made, like it's only just increased in value to me. And um, yeah, what an amazing artist. That's another incredible mainstream pop record we've had this year, man. Another one, another one. Did I just like skip? No, I didn't, that's number five. Okay. <laughs> now this next one may surprise you, but this album has actually been like saving my life lately. Real shit. This number five choice, I was so fucking scared that I skipped this because the, the, the value I've been getting from this album recently has been silly. My number five choice is... Confidence Man, 
tilt. Man, whoa. I have been so inspired by this record lately. I literally have been, I've not been making too many videos as of late because I've been making music and it's the danciest shit I've ever made. And I 100% credit the, credit the danciness of my recent beats I've been doing to Confidence Man because holy fuck this album is so goddamn fun. Wow. I need to go back and hear their debut. I never even heard the debut record. I was sleeping on Confidence Man because fuck me, I love this. <laughs> it's so fucking joyous it's so contagiously playful like this album has so few concerns outside of just being happy as shit i, I love it all the boys say oh all the girls say oh everybody in the house is getting down right now <laughs> all of the little vocal phrases and melodies and the chords it's all so heavenly and like you just feel it in your soul instantly it just becomes part of you within, within seconds like man the second half is full of just some of the most amazing compositions i've heard in dance music like the the, the, the melodies they string together the vocals it's really beautifully arranged man let me know it's true treat me like a woman thank you when i'm loving you <laughs> i have this album in my head at all times at the moment and um bro i just keep finding new highlights with an ass like that there's no conversation with the <laughs> all my people all my people all my people where you at bro i just i can't get enough of this shit it's truly trick the, the enjoyment i get is strictly down to it's just so damn fucking no gimmicks let's dance like it's just so fully committed to being exactly that and I, I love it for it, bro. It's so cool. I love this album. Number four is... One day call it manifestation and man will get taken away. I'm going psycho mode. Jeez, let me, let me, I'm going super saiyan insano mode. Let me chill. You only reserve that for special occasions. Saba, a few good things. My favorite Saba album so far, for sure. I think this is a stunning record man like it had a profound effect on me when i first heard it but I, I think i just couldn't quite unlock what that was and i think as the months have gone by and I've, as i've come back to it like it's really managed to just occupy a, a spot on my brain a really heavy spot on my brain i really think this is his most well realized varied and amazingly written uh, album so far i've seen a lot of people complain about the lyrics on this record but what The fuck? Bro, I think these verses are so gorgeous, man. This is Samba at his most revealing, I think. This is him at his most telling. Care For Me was a very sad and like powerful record in a, in a way, in ways that felt uncomfortable. A lot of that album was about like grieving and processing. Like how can one even come back from ha having lost so much, you know? But, and, and I think he really took the time to make a follow-up record that felt so potently like the process of realizing that, you know, there's always gonna be like, there's always a way forward, you know? You know, even when things seem like they're the most hopeless. And this record channels that amazingly well. And I think that, I think he just, he's, his ability as a songwriter to bring these emotions to paper, to bring them to songs, I think has only grown over the years as he's matured. He's just, he's improved as an artist, as a rapper, as a producer, as everything. And I think he's just made a much more vivid uh, realization of the feelings he's trying to channel on this record. And I think that's why it hits me so much. And much like he's trying to say about how good things come in few, you know, cherish those good things as small as they can be, much like that sentiment does imply, the album itself has got a few spots of just pure fun. Come My Way, such a lovely tune. The track with Pivot Gang is amazing. The production on there is, is so fucking good. I love the variety in the instrumentals too. It's all, it all feels like it's at home, Sabo on his soulful, jazzy Chicago kind of shit. But he really does show like all sides of that musical spectrum here. It's a much more colorful record than I've ever heard on like from Sab. Like it's really brimming with creativity and just bursting uh, with light. And I think that makes it just such a warm, inviting, wonderful record with so much to appreciate. And I personally think this is just, uh, just amazing. My number four pick, big fan. Big fan. Number three. Number three. Number three. Numero tres. 
Big Thief, Dragon, New War Mountain, I Believe in You. Gotta be my favorite uh, rock album of the year so far. This is like a art rock, indie rock release from the, the Big Thiefers. I've been following Big Thief for a few years. They have just been improving with every record and they were dope from the start, but yeah, this one right here is their best work to me, for sure. For me, a lot of the appeal in Big Thief's music has always come from the brittle kind of timbres they have with their instruments. It feels like it's kind of being recorded in like some rundown cabin, but it's like a nice, beautiful communal moment for all the players just kind of like connecting and just enjoying some music, just playing their hearts out. It's something so just like, you feel like you're getting like a real um, close look you know, with every song they make, it feels like you're getting like a close moment. And this record somehow manages to keep that that kind of a uh, idea, that same that same joy, but tr but but still make a batch of songs that feel huge. This is the largest a Big Thief record has ever felt. And I didn't just mean in like its runtime; it's like a really it's a really long album. But I don't mean it in that way. It's 20 tracks, 80 minutes, huge record. But the songs themselves, they feel like monumental breakthroughs. Every single song is fireworks here. And I just, I think it's stunning just how they never run low on just beautiful things to say. For 20 tracks? You keeping that shit up for 20 tracks, bro? What? In the very first one, for the simulation song. What? The wind is going psycho. Like, I love when you get like a great long album, man. It's like, you know, could have just kept it trim, made a great 12 track album, but now you, you said, fuck it, we're gonna go even further and add more songs that are also amazing. So then you just have this gigantic ocean of music that's all incredible to just enjoy in one giant sitting whenever you want. Like, bro, thank you. You didn't, you didn't need to, do, to go that hard. You had, you had no, there's no reason to go that hard, but you decided to. You went you went for the full effort, you know, to go, to go truly Captain Insano mode and like, Make it a whole fucking 80 minute record where the whole thing is fire? Like what? I feel like they just didn't miss a single time. <laughs> it's just like, how the fuck did you do that? Not that, you know, it's like shocking to me that they made a great album. They've made great albums before, but just to keep it up, keep that momentum up this entire runtime. Mad. I would say this is definitely the number one like comfort listen in regards to just like the sound of it. Everything about the way this record feels to listen to. It just feels like a nice massage. For that reason, there's, there's always going to be room to play this record. I feel like I'm always going to be in a mood to hear at least one of the songs on this album. So for that reason, it easily lands a top three. It's just been a very meaningful thing for me to have this record on my phone. I appreciate it. Now we're in the top two. Number two. Number two is, of course, My Girls. <laughs> Let's eat grandma. Two ribbons. Yo, I've been seeing a bunch of articles talking about this album is a really beautiful celebration of friendship. I mean, true, but I don't know, man. Hall of Mirrors, are they a couple? <laughs> I had to ask, bro. I had to ask, like, yo, they sound like they more than friends. Or like, I don't know, maybe I'm reading into it wrong, but it kind of feels like a garden shed Tyler the Creator type situation where they're like, that's definitely a theme. I think the lyrics on this record are, are so amazing. Like, they're so beautiful, man. This album is, all about the relationship between the two members of the band and the complications beautiful moments that have come with that you know going through the bad to come out even stronger talking through just the difficult times and i could be i could be completely wrong but i definitely get a sense that there's like a romantic sort of angle I, at least on the hall of mirrors it sounds like maybe i read it like she's saying like oh she didn't realize she had those feelings and she's realizing it with this partnership but she's like unsure how to you know communicate that and like is having to face that maybe that can't work and there, there are some really heavy themes like that here that i didn't expect and, and and i'm not sure if i haven't personally read anyone say that yet maybe that is a thing that is you know like not it's like obvious and i'm just being stupid but like all the reviews i saw said this was like a really great ode to friendship and it is in a lot of ways 100 percent but I don't know, bro. I feel like that song definitely has some like romantic kind of themes, and I thought it was really beautifully realized. Like I, well, you know, when I kind of caught that. But yeah, I loved how they wrote these songs and how and how they 
approach them through this angle of confusion, understanding that amazing things can come from having a perfect bond with someone. Like that's where the root of all of this is. There are some, there are some amazing sentiments here that make me feel so damn happy and smiley. And that's just talk about the lyrics and the singing and the vocals and shit like that. One of the most touching and interesting albums in that department that I've heard all year. But the music here, the production here is stunning. Fucking incredible music here, man. Like they're, they're, they've always had like a bubbly, bright, colorful synth pop kind of sound, but they really, really tapped into some, something insane with these instrumentals, dude. The drums are so punchy and snappy and, and they, they groove so fucking nicely alongside these giant, huge ethereal washes of synth and bass tones that are at all times just a ray of sunshine seriously some of the most warm delicate and catchy music of the year and uh i find this thing just stunning in every way man i feel like this is their best work so far it's not quite as experimental and daring as their last record but i think the songwriting is, is just improved tenfold and it's, it's just an, in general i'd say overall a more compelling record so for me this is this is a stunner this was damn near the number one honestly it's just how they touched on those themes of just like dealing with those feelings you know friendship and your appreciation for that friendship i just thought was super real genuinely such a honest and beautiful look at those things that i really connected to so that's why i bring it up because i just i just i just found that a really moving aspect of the album but speaking of albums that moved me beyond belief number one you know what it is you know let me just Meditation, my spirit's awakening, my brain is like what else could it <laughs> Dude, I'm serious right now. I think this is I think this is as good as to Pippa Butterfly. I'm you serious. didn't say that. I'm serious. I really do think it is. Tell me <laughs> you did not And I feel so just happy say that. To be able to say that and mean it. Like Dude. This is one of the most unbelievable things I've heard in my life. Like, I think this record is on a level of quality that you do not see every day. Like, this, this shit is, like, different, man. I noticed this with everything Kendrick does. Even, you see his Glastonbury show? I felt this with that show, too. But, like, because the way, he's such a bizarre stage presence. I was watching the show, like, yo, he looks so in the fucking zone. Like, he's, like... He ain't smiling much. <laughs> He's just like in character a thousand percent. And, um, and and like every movement from all the dances, from the visual cues in the back, the position he was in on the stage, it all felt like to the fucking measure planned. That's why Kendrick's the fucking greatest, dude. That's why he's an, an amazing artist. Because you hear that in every record. It feels like it's all for a purpose, man. Every little drum, every little note, little melody, every little break and pause and sound in the back and vocal bit, it all contributes towards what Kendrick's trying to say. What he's trying to say, on this record, it's way too dense and layered of a <laughs> to, to, to bring up in this fucking video, and I gotta keep it somewhat concise, but he brings up some amazing things. He talks about generational trauma. He talks about trauma in the black community, trauma he's faced himself, learning, growing, maturing asking questions that are way beyond one's possible understanding like people look to kendrick after the tip of a butterfly release people look to kendrick as this voice for the voiceless talking on these huge global issues and he's he brings up that that, that pressure can be a lot you know he brings it up on tracks, tracks like savior and on this record he does tackle global problems but he does it in a much more selfish way i mean that in a, in a good way he does it in a way that's more introspective more therapeutic he's he, he's not doing it because he feels like he has to be the savior the one to speak on these things but no he does it because he needs to for himself he has got to battle shit on this record this is it's his most deeply personal release so far easily and in the process of doing that he starts to ask questions the whys in regards to why relationships are the way they are why arguments happen why it can it can cause people to do horrible things people act as as monsters across generations you know parents children can be treated a certain way an uncomfortably ugly way kendrick attempts to ask and just like ponder what the purpose is for that like why what's the root of that and you can tell it's um it's through all that soul searching he came to answers he could live with 
and he did all of that strictly just because the mental freaking gymnastics the wires that have been crossed just the amount of just tied knots there were i felt like he just cleansed it all on this record and hearing someone like kendrick who always brings such a thoughtful perspective onto any topic he decides to talk about hearing him of all people talk about these very deeply vulnerable things was one of the most refreshing and beautiful things I've, I've heard in years. And I think I really appreciated that he went this direction because I think none of us really knew what to expect from a, the Kendrick comeback. And he just expressed so much active disinterest in being that perfect savior, being that like, you know, you know he, he, he's a very flawed person on here and he's not like scared of that. And I think that's amazing. I, I love just how he made this record strictly just for his own personal learning growing he wasn't concerned with anyone else but himself he chose he chose himself i choose me i'm sorry are you happy for me smile on my face but i happy for me yeah i'm at the way yeah i love that about this record and on top of that the music's amazing the music's f the music's so fucking great dude <laughs> it's just amazing <laughs> I feel, I remember when T-Pab dropped, I was just so fucked up by it. Like, that's, I felt the same shit. I feel, I felt the same shit when this came out and I was listening to it, but I'm just like, it's too fucking great. <laughs> How can this guy exist, bro? <laughs> All of it is so just meticulous and beautifully realized in such a rewarding way that seriously does make you want to come back catch all the details catch all the themes and you enjoy doing it too because he just delightfully embellishes all of it with some of the most wonderful music like the the, prog the <coughs> production elegant it's gritty it's colorful it's ugly in all the right ways and it never stays still it gives you it gives you something for everyone there are ballads on here there are very somber powerful ballads songs like crown and mother i sober there are exciting rampaging catchy bangers like silent hill or uh n95 and there are songs that feel like one giant just art piece to marvel at like united in grief or we cry together where it's just one just just stunning experience that you just you just can't get anywhere else like no other artist in hip-hop or in, honestly in, in music period brings this level of just detail and precise execution to their albums like you can tell kendrick he has hit singles, he puts on a crazy show, but he is an album artist who is here to produce an amazing body of work that we can all live with and carry with us throughout our lives. And Kendrick did exactly that. Did he please everyone? Fuck no. But was he trying to? Fuck no. He was trying to make an album for himself a thousand percent. And I admire the living hell out of that. This album just, just, it just screams that with every decision it makes. And some of those decisions, man, they don't, they don't sit right with everyone understandably so trust me i get it it's a divisive record a thousand percent but for what this record did for me i cannot thank it enough i think it's marvelous kendrick fucking lamar yes that's my list that's my list thank you for watching i hope y'all are doing great fucking love you guys fucking love you guys man. you have no idea you have no idea bro <laughs> more than you know and um yeah man i'm gonna see y'all in the next video Whatever that may be. I don't fucking know. I'm just like a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what your favorite albums this year are, please. Right now. Right now. Why are you even... Like, wh why would you not? Tell me. Huh? Well, why not? Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you even considering or thinking like just do it? Just tell me what your favorite fucking arms are. Yeah. Okay, so we could talk about it, bro. It's like not that weird. Okay, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> just comment something, please. <laughs> Subscribe if you want to see more videos. Click the like if you enjoyed this video. Support the channel and stuff. That made me really happy. But like most importantly though, enjoy your day enjoy your day make sure your day today make sure you leave it with a smile on your face whatever you gotta do to make that possible go out of your way to do it for yourself treat yourself tom haverford style and i'll see you on the next video okay i love you goodbye goodbye